Hi guys, this is Matt Granger, that Nikon guy. Today I'm here to do a 50 millimeter showdown. Now let's be clear, I'm not here to ask whether you should buy a 50 mil lens. My answer to that is yes. This video series is to talk about which of the 50 mil lenses you should get for your camera. Now, 50 mil has been a standard for generations of photographers for a couple of fantastic reasons. Firstly, it emulates the human field of view pretty much exactly. So when you're looking and what you're clearly seeing and taking into account is around about 50 mil at equivalent on a 35 millimeter camera. Another good reason is that they are really sharp, really fast, quite flexible and reasonably priced. So a 50 mil lens, all the four that I'm going to uh, throw head to head here, I can tell you now, they're all acceptably sharp. They all have nice bokeh. They all perform well. It's just, you need to think about which of the different features you need the most, and then how much you want to pay, and which results you want to get to choose which of the lenses you should actually be looking at getting. Now, there are prime lens, obviously, and prime lenses are generally sharper. The zooms are great now, but there's a reason people love primes. They do encourage you to think and move around and be creative with your photography. But there's something great about a 50 mil. As I say, they make them for a long time. They make a lot of them. They make them cheaply, but they're super fast for their price. Uh, people love a 2.8 lens because of, you know, it's great in low light, it's great for bokeh and the out of focus area of a shot. But consider that a 1.4 50mm lens is letting in four times the amount of light of a 2.8 lens. It's two stops faster. F2.8, F2, F1.4. That's four times the amount of light and a lot smaller depth of field, which means nicer blur in the background. So let's take a look at our four contenders. Here is the bargain of the group. This is the 1.8D. Nikon have been making this one for a long time now. It's all plastic, it's cheap and cheerful, but it still has an aperture ring on there. So you can use this on your older film cameras or cameras that can't control the aperture in the body. This one has six elements in five groups, the simplest setup of any of them. It only has seven aperture blades and they're straight. It does from f1.8 all the way through to f22. It goes the highest out of any. The others don't go all the way up to 22. This also has a closest focusing distance of 45 centimeters, which is one of the better ones. And this little boy weighs in at just 155 grams. It really is the lightweight, cheap and cheerful option. Next up is the new kid on the block, the 1.8G. This one's only recently been announced. Uh, it has seven elements in six groups. It has one aspherical elements and the lens is multi-coated. It's got seven rounded aperture blades. Whilst it doesn't have an aperture ring because it's a G, that means gilded. It goes from F1.8 all the way through to F16. It also has a closest focusing distance of 0.45 of a meter, 45 centimeters, and this one is 185 grams, so about 30 grams heavier than the 1.8D. And our third lens in the showdown is the 1.4G. This is also an AFS silent wave G lens. This has eight elements in seven groups. It's also multi-coated. It also has a closest focusing distance of 45 centimeters. It has nine rounded aperture blades goes from f1.4 to f16 just like the others at the top end of 16 and this one is 290 grams so a significant jump in weight and you can feel there is an improvement on build quality with this one and last but not least is the 50 mil 1.2 nikkor this is manual focus it's ungilded it still has the aperture ring on there and it's all mechanical all glass all steel beautiful this has seven lens elements in six groups, nine straight uh, aperture blades. It does f1.2 all the way through to f16, 50 centimeters closest focus, and it weighs in at 380 grams, the heaviest of all of them by far. Okay, so on paper at least, these four are all quite different. I mean, they share a similar closest focusing distance, uh, they go from f16 to f22 depending on which one you choose uh, the weight varies quite a bit you know by more than double but they're still none of them are really heavy lenses 
but let's put them side by side to have a look at them and then we'll I'll give you an idea of the actual build quality of each of these. Okay, so looking top down on each of these, from left to right, that's the 1.8D, the 1.8G, the 1.4G, and the 1.2. Now it's important to note that G doesn't mean that they are a higher quality lens per se. They do tend to be higher quality, but all the G really means is that they're gilded. Now these ones are AFS and they have the silent wave motor, so they are, you would expect them to be the fastest focusing and to be the most quiet. But neither of these lenses have their special nano crystals and neither of them have ED glass in them. So don't think that G means that, you know, something like the L does in Canon. That's not what it means. Okay, now the 1.8D is a great lens, um, really plasticky though, you can really see the difference. Going through them, I would say it's quite definite that you are going up in quality as you move through the range. And it's not just which one has the most glass. The 1.8D is plasticky, it feels it, nothing moves with much resistance at all, the aperture ring is a bit clunky and ratchety when you move it around and it does just feel like it's all made of plastic which it pretty much is. The 1.8G and 1.4G are much closer in build quality. Overall the 1.4 is a little bit uh, media, uh, mainly I guess because it has more glass inside but the rotation does have a nicer resistance to it on the focus ring than the 1.8G does. And then the 1.2 is, you know, clearly the, the best build quality of them all. It's all just steel and uh, glass. It's just beautiful. One interesting thing to note is the aperture blades on each of them though. Let's get a good shot on that. Okay, so taking a look at the lenses from left to right, you'll see that the, you know, they do have different number of aperture blades and the, that does, you know, it, you can f physically see it. I think it's quite interesting to note that the 1.2, which is the oldest, and the manual focus one, is the one that has the tips of the aperture blades actually on the outside, all the others hide them on the inside. Doesn't have much of a difference really uh, in practice. But take a look at the size of the front elements you'll note that the front of this lens, the 1.4G, is actually bigger than the 1.2, but only that central part is glass. This has a much bigger glass element, smaller, smaller, and about the same, but the, the way that they're set up is quite different. Okay guys, so in terms of build quality, I think it's fair to say there's a clear step between each of the lenses as you go up through the range. Less clear between the 1.8G and the 1.4G, but for me it's still there, especially in the resistance you get on the focusing ring. Um, I think the 1.4G is uh, better constructed and nicer to use. Uh, I find the 1.2 beautiful, but as we'll get to later, there's obviously some downsides to it being manual focus. And the 1.8D um, obviously has some disadvantages. The front extends from the body as you're focusing, it does feel plasticky, it is plasticky, but as we'll see later, it's still a good performer and for the price, could be just the lens that you're after. So that's the end of part one. Click the link there, I'll make a playlist. The next video is going to be on the focus abilities of each of these lenses. Then as we go forward, I'll be testing image quality and sharpness, bokeh, and doing an overall conclusion and summary and recommendations based on all of those tests for your information. So if you enjoyed the video, please click to like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with the latest videos that are coming out. And I'll see you soon. This is Matt Granger, that Nikon guy.